Well, praise the Lord. This is another day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. For those of you who do not know, I'm Pastor Oliver, and this morning I'm going to be sharing with you the good news. Amen. Uh, but before we get started, let's go ahead and pray and uh, so we can move into our lesson for today. Father, we're so grateful and we're always thankful to you for the privilege as well as the opportunity that we get to share the word of God. Father, I submit myself to you, spirit, soul, and body. That is to be used of you. And not only that, Father, but I thank you for your anointing this morning. I pray that your anointing that's in me will come on me so that I may stand in this anointing and teach your word with boldness and with accuracy. I welcome your peace, your power, and your presence this morning to be brought to bear not only upon myself, but upon the viewing audience. I pray, Father, that you would think through my mind, that you would speak through my vocal cords. I decree and declare now that we have eyes to see and ears to hear what the Spirit is saying to us in this hour. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, praise the Lord. Uh, this morning, I'm going to continue. This is part three of Kingdom Reset. Part three of Kingdom Reset. So we're going to begin with uh, Matthew chapter number three, verses 11 and 12 from the Message Translation. Matthew chapter number three, verses 11 and 12 from the Message Translation. All right, are we ready? Here we go. I'm baptizing you here in the river, turning your old life in, in for a kingdom life. For a kingdom life. The real action come next. The main character in this drama, compared to him, I am a mere stagehand will ignite the kingdom life within you, a fire within you, the Holy Spirit within you, changing you from the inside out. And I want you to pay particular attention to kingdom life. All right, let's go to Matthew chapter 5, verse 48. Again, the message translation, kingdom life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Matthew chapter 5, verse number 48. Here we go. In a word, what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, grow up. You are kingdom subjects or you are kingdom citizens. Amen. Now live like it. Live like kingdom citizen. Live out your God-created identity. Live generously, graciously towards others the way God lives towards you. And I said this on last week, and of course, it certainly bears repeating again this week, and that is if we would treat people, notice the last part of this verse, the way God lives towards us, if we would treat people the way God lives towards us, then I believe that this world would be a better place. Amen. And um, the chaos and the confusion certainly comes from <clears throat> us treating people the way we feel like they should be treated rather than the way God would have for us to treat them. And so we are kingdom citizens. We, we have a kingdom life. And uh, let me just go ahead and say this up front. No disrespect to anyone. Listen to me. There is no disrespect to anyone. But in particular, the word kingdom life and kingdom subject is speaking to a specific group of people. It's not just talking about no anyone. Amen. And that, that uh, group of people are those who have committed, those who have made a decision to make Jesus Christ the Lord of their lives. Amen. The Bible says in uh, John chapter 1, verse 12, to as many as received him. My question to you is, have you received him? To as many as received him to them. 
them who, them that receive him, gave he the right to become so, the son of God, our sons and daughters of God. And so if you have not received him, then you are not a kingdom citizen. Amen. All right. So this again is kingdom reset part three. Um, now I want to uh, somewhat go over some things that I went uh, over on uh, uh, last Sunday morning. Uh, and that is um, somewhat explaining to you exactly what I mean when I say kingdom reset, kingdom reset. Now, when you talk about kingdom, uh, we're talking about the rule and reign of Christ on the earth, number one. Number two, we're talking about uh, the blessing and advantage that flows from living under Christ's rule. Amen. That is being obedient. Amen. Following the lead of the spirit. Number three, we're talking about uh, he that is Jesus is king and we are subject or citizen of his kingdom. And that is the church. And lastly, and what I've been really majoring on of lately, and that is we're talking about God's way of doing things and being right. Amen. I said we're talking about God's way of doing things and being right. God is always right. <laughs> Listen, I say God is always right. There's never a time that that we can say <clears throat> with any uh, good consciousness that God is wrong. God is always right. Amen. And so uh, what our endeavor, what our pursuit should be is wanting to be on the same page with God or wanting to flow with God because he's always right. Amen. All right. So one of the things that I've been doing throughout this series from day one, and that is <clears throat> I've been uh, talking to you uh, uh, from the onset uh, about uh, a part of the Declaration of Independence. You know, I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but there is a paragraph in there that that really uh, helped me to uh, set the stage for Kingdom Reset. And the, the, the paragraph here says, we hold these truths to be self-evidence that all men are created how? Equally. All men are created equally. And, and of course, uh, the word backs this up is re another reason why I'm emphasizing this, that all men are created equal. They are endowed, that is provided or equipped uh, with, uh, by their creator with certain unalienable rights. That among these, that is those unalienable rights, is life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Amen. All men are created equal. Hallelujah. <clears throat> now, so that is a part of uh, our declaration of, of independence. Um, so, <clears throat> Kingdom reset, the word reset here means to set again or to do again, watch this, differently. Amen. And I believe that as the body of Christ, and I'm speaking generally here, I'm not talking about a certain group of people, but as the body of Christ uh, concerning the issues that, that I have raised and been talking about, it's time that we hit reset. Amen. Not reset because just because I'm saying it. I mean, look around you, <laughs> you know, just look around you. I mean, you know, uh, be sensitive to what's going on around you. It's time that the people of God hit the button of reset. Amen. Now, in America, we have our share of problems. <laughs> Trust me, we have our share of problems. And uh, they range from, and, and there are three areas that, uh, that are uh, standing before us. And I'm sure that there are a lot of areas, you know, that, that we can consider a, a challenge or a problem where America is concerned. But there are three in particular that I want to emphasize uh, here from the onset. Number one, we have the COVID pandemic virus. Amen. That's what's going on. Amen. That's where we are. That's current. Amen. That's up to date. Uh, not only in our city, but it's indiscriminately uh, is everywhere. 
Number two, uh, we have the issue of systemic racism. Yes, systemic racism. And then the third area is found, watch this, in the area of our political arena. It's, it's in the area of our political arena. And child of God, let me tell you something. You know, if you're not spending any time in the word, you know, if you're not, you know, uh, uh, meditating in the word, you know, if you are not exposing yourself and opening yourself up to the word of God, I'm telling you, just in view of the pandemic, uh, the, the, the systemic racism and, and the, the things that are going on politically, I'm telling you, you would be confused. And so many people are. They don't understand what's going on. If it ain't one thing, it's another one and what have you and so forth and so on. But I'm telling you something, the people of God during this time, listen, the Bible talks about a peace that passes all understanding. I'm talking about a peace that just don't make sense. And we can have the peace of God and we do have the peace of God in us. Amen. So I don't subscribe to, I don't buy into confusion. It is what it is. Amen. That is concerning uh, the things that we are facing uh, in this day and time. Hallelujah. Now, it's unfortunate that the church would rather avoid this issue of racism. Oh, yeah. This is, I mean, it's obvious that they would much rather avoid the issue um, that I've raised and that's going on right now of racism. They much rather uh, just not talk about it. Watch this in hopes that it'll just go away. <laughs> but listen, I'm here to tell you. It's not going away. No, it's not going away. It's, it's not going away. And, and until the church, I'm not talking about the world. I'm talking about the kingdom citizen. You know, unless we deal with this thing, amen, the way God is leading and directing us to. Because, listen, let me tell you something. God has the answer. <laughs> listen, God has the answer. Amen. And not only that, but the people of God, if God has the answer, then God, listen, he will get the answer to his people. Now, we got to work what he revealed to us. Amen. There are things that we may have to do, but we're not going to just, you know, come to a place and just not talk about it in hopes that it go away. It's not just going to go away. It's going to go away when we as the people of God take our place. Amen and do what the Spirit of God is leading or prompting us to do. Amen. Now, turn, if you will, to 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 17 through 19 from the Message Translation. We talked about this on last week, and I just want to reiterate it again so that we, uh, you know, we move on here. <clears throat> now, Look at this. Notice what this verse says. It's judgment time for the Christian. It's judgment time for the Christians. Christians. We're first in line. If it starts with us, think of what it's going to be like for those who refuse God's message. Verse 18. If good people barely make it, What's in store for the bad? And verse 19. So if you find your life difficult because you are doing what God said. See, just because, thank you for that Holy Ghost. You know, just because we are doing what God says, that that just somehow or another eliminates us from any difficult. <laughs> oh, think again, my brothers and sisters. Note what it says here. So if you find life difficult because you are doing what God said, take it in strive. Trust him. That is, trust God. He knows what he's doing. Listen, I say God knows what he's doing. And he knows what he's doing in your life. Those of you who are obeying him, those of you who are obeying him and you're finding it uh, running into difficult. Amen. He knows what he's doing. Trust him. He knows what he's doing and he'll keep on doing it. He is not just, you know, one shot and in and out. No, he wants to consistently and constantly 
do God. He want to consistently and constantly be involved in our lives. Amen. So the absence or rather the presence of difficulty doesn't mean that God is not present. Amen. We are in this world, but we are not of this world. The Bible tells us that Satan is the God of this world. And we're going to talk about him, uh, you know, and expose, you know, his game plan, hopefully before our time is up. Now, so now notice, go back to verse 17. Uh, see, then I want, I want, I want to uh, reinforce. Reiterate something. It says it's judgment time for the Christ for Christians. We're the first in line. Why is it judgment time for the Christians? Why is it judgment time? You know, why is God picking on us? <laughs> you know, what, what is what have we done? You know why it's judgment time for us is because. The Christian, and I'm, I, again, I'm, talk, I'm speaking generally. I'm talking about the body of Christ. I'm talking about kingdom citizens. We have not done, listen, we have not done what the word or what the spirit of God has led and, and, and been leading and rather and guiding and directing us to do. You know, we have, we have uh, submitted somewhat ourselves to this world, you know, and the way things are going. Rather than listening to the spirit of God, rather than following the spirit of God, hear me. When and I don't, I don't want to uh, get off too far into this, but on last uh, Sunday morning, I read to you the scripture that says whatever you bind here on earth or whatever you consider to be unlawful and improper is what is already unlawful and improper in heaven. Whatever you loose here on earth, God said is already loosed in heaven. Are we binding and loosening? You know, do we look at the things that are, that are around us that are improper and unlawful? Are we dealing with those things? The Bible even talks about in Matthew chapter 5 how that we're the salt and light of this earth. I mean, come on. We're the salt and the light in this earth. You know, when you think about what God has done for us, when you think about what he's doing in us, and how he expects for us, you know, to move about in this world and concerning situations, concerning uh, case in point. When I mention about this, this pandemic, uh, when I mention about systemic racism and when I mention about the political arena, you know, <clears throat> so. Yes, God expects for us to do something. Amen. And not only that, but he never expects for us to do it. In our own ability, God will work in us. He'll work through us in order to do what he wants done or to get done what he wants in this earth. Are you hearing what I'm saying, child of God? So judgment must begin at the house of God. It has to begin at the house of God. You know, God has an expectation uh, uh, of us. He has an expectation of us. And that expectation of us is based upon what he has did for us, how he has set us up, amen, how he has invested in us, this ability, his anointing. What are we doing with it? What, what are we doing with it? Amen. So, all right, let's go on. Yes, as children of God, we should hate what God hates. Absolutely, unequivocally. We should hate what God hates, not who, because God doesn't hate anyone. I said we should hate what God hates. And I'm going to tell you something, child of God. <laughs> God hates injustice. He hates it. Why? Why does God hate injustice? Well, because, first of all, it's not a part of his nature. His nature is that of love. Listen, so listen. Injustice is something that's unfair that happens or happening often in violation of basic human right. Just unfairness. Just unfairness. Injustice. God hates, listen, he hates racism. Racism is evil. It is evil. It is of the devil. How do I know that? Because racism creates division. Racism invites confusion. 
racism all but says this person is better than that person. And God, as I read it last week, he has no respect to a person. Racism uh, highlights inferior uh, as well as uh, superior. There are people that feel superior as opposed to those who they view as inferior. That should not be. So God hates racism. And the reason why he hates it first and foremost is because it is evil. Hallelujah. All right. <laughs> he hates systemic racism. Institutional racism, also known as systemic racism, is a form of racism that is embedded as normal practice within our society. This stuff is embedded in people's hearts as a normal practice. That's why a lot of times, you know, people, uh, white people are in, in such denial. <laughs> you know, and when I say in denial, they un honestly and sincerely think or will say that they are not racist. But listen, I'm talking about something that is embedded in our normal practice within our society or an organization. It can lead to such issues as discrimination in criminal justice, employment, housing, health care, the political power, and education, among other issues. And the list goes on and on and on. Now, why? Think about this. Let me give you something to think about. When white people occupy most positions, and that is positions of power, people of color have a difficult time getting a fair shake, let alone to get ahead. Hear me. I mean, I'm, I'm, listen, I'm calling it like it is. You know, when you have white people in positions of power, you know, and of course, and I'm not talking about all, but there are some that because of their position of power, they discriminate. They are prejudiced. Amen. And here's, here's, the, here's the sad thing about it. This is what's sad. Most of them are Christians or call themselves Christians. Wow. God hates inequality. That is the quality of being unequal or uneven such as social depravity, depravity of, of uh, distribution or opportunity, just depriving people of opportunities or depriving people of the ability to acquire certain things. See, this stuff shows up in many different arenas. Amen. <laughs> God hates racial prejudice. I say he hates racial prejudice. Preconceived opinion that is not based on reason or actual experience. One may decide they do not like someone because of the color of their skin. That's called racial prejudice. The, the, the folks ain't did nothing to you. You don't even know them. But because of the color of their skin. <laughs> wow. That's 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 hatred. Bitterness. And I'm emphasizing from Christians, people that say that they love God. Wow. I could go on and on, but let me make two quotes here, one by uh, Nelson Mandela and the other by Dr. King. Nelson Mandela said this. He said, no one is born hating another person because of the color of their skin or even their background or their religion. People must learn to hate. In other words, they learn to hate. They're not born hating. They learn to hate. And if they can learn to hate, watch this, they can learn to love. The same way that they learn to hate can be the same way that they learn to love. Dr. King said this, injustice for one is injustice for all. Amen. Again, reiterating something that I said on uh, last Sunday morning, uh, what happened to uh, George Floyd there in Minnesota. Listen, that happened to him as a black man. Listen, injustice for one is injustice for all. 
And it's time that the people of God, now, now, now listen, I'm talking about the people of God now, that they stand up and speak out. And see, that's where, that's where the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is at fault. And that is many of our white brothers and sisters will not stand up and speak out. Now, of course, there have been, uh, you know, those, uh, the, uh, I'm not just saying that no white people are standing up and speaking out, but I'm saying many are not. They're not saying nothing. They're not saying anything. Again, these are more than likely the people that, you know, are just hoping that it just go away. <laughs> Again, it's not just going to go away. Let's look at 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 10 through 12. And I want you to notice in these verses the word evil. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 10 from the King James Version. First Peter chapter three, verse First Peter chapter three, verse ten from the King James Version. And I want again you to notice particular the word evil. All right, notice what this verse says. And again, this is talking to the body of Christ. It's talking to kingdom citizen. I, I, I feel like I, I need to uh, constantly update that. I need to constantly remind you who, you know, the apostle Peter and different ones are, are referring to here. Notice what he said. For he that will love life. How many of you love life? <laughs> I do. <laughs> he that will love life and see good days. How many of you see good days? I've seen some good days. Amen. Let him refrain his tongue from evil. Let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. Verse 11. Let him assure evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. Verse 12. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. Watch this. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil. And again, reiterating something that I said, racism is evil. Injustice is evil. Inequality is evil evil. Discrimination is evil. Amen. Prejudice is evil. Hallelujah. All right. So what is Peter saying to us? I, I, I want to go through probably about six or seven things here that that is being said. Number one, we as a church must resist evil or racism and we must seek peace and pursue it. We must resist it because, listen, my white brothers and sisters, it's going to be presented to you. It's going to come to you. Amen. Now, and I'm not even, you know, emphasizing at the moment coming from you. I'm talking about coming to you. So, listen, we must seek peace and pursue it. Whatever, listen, I'm talking about peace in the body of Christ. Amen. That will filter out into the world. Amen. Uh, number two. We must speak up against casual racism that's coming from our friends and see what has happened. And I know this to be true. Listen, I know this to be true. Some of us, you know, that we have we've not been spewing out, you know, evil and we've not been spewing out, you know, uh, racist comments or what have you. But our friends are, are coming to us with these jokes and saying different things about, you know, about black people. And so we don't say nothing. But do you realize that that's making you a corporate as well? Do you realize that that you are complicit to uh, that uh, that setting or that person coming to you, you know, with their racist jokes? No, it's time that you confront your friend and let them know that that's not right. As a Christian, as a follower of Christ, it's not right. Number three, 
We must believe our African-American brothers and sisters about the systemic racism they face even when it is discovered that we are part of the problem. Amen. I mean, even if we find out, and when I say find out the spirit of God, let me tell you something, child of God. You know, if you are sensitive to the spirit of God, the spirit of God will expose. Well, one, I, let me, I, I don't want to use that word expose, but will reveal to you your part, how you have carried yourself or how you have conducted yourself concerning these issues that I'm raising here. Amen. All right. Let's go on. We must listen to those who are ahead in the journey of resisting racism. You know, and that's what I've done. I've not been listening to people that have been spewing out hatred and people that have, you know, uh, been negative, you know, towards white people and things. But I have been selective. I have selected certain ones that I listen to, you know, that's talking about things that the body of Christ can do and, 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 and what the body of Christ, you know, should do and what have you. So listen, notice I said we must listen to those who are ahead in the journey of resisting racism. And there are people who are ahead of us, even myself and others, uh, in this journey of resisting racism. We must, watch this, we must advocate for real reform of an unjust system and real accountability for oppress, oppressive and murderous acts. You know, when these things happen, you know, uh, you know, with different ones and we see that it's injustice, then we must speak up and speak out. Well, you know, it, 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 you know, I, I don't have nothing to do with it. It's not. Listen, we must speak up and we must speak out. Last thing, we must be prayerful. Now, listen, you got to get this. We must be prayerful and mindful of those we elect into office in our local, in our state, and our national election. You know, you just can't just run in there and just, you know, vote for this one and vote for that. I don't understand. Now, and, and please hear me. I, I got to come close to you because, you know, you got people that are, and, and I, I might not say this right, so excuse me, I think you'll understand what I'm saying, that are hardcore Democrats, that are hardcore Republicans. I don't understand that. I don't get it now, you know, and so I understand, you know, that Democrats, you know, they are more this and Republicans are more this and that and what have you. But listen at the issues because your Democrat, you know, uh, person that, you know, that you because you're a Democrat, he could be a racist. And I know there are more issues than just that. But what I'm saying is if you listen to your spirit. Rather than listening at your relatives, rather than listening at different ones, you know, and them spewing out, you know, uh, Democrats, this and Republican, that. Listen, make a decision for yourself. You don't need no one else, to, you know, to coerce you or to try to convince you, or, you know, the Democrats, this or the Republican, that. Make a decision for yourself. Because I'm going to tell you something. The person whom you, you know, uh, you elect, amen, you know, uh, and you are part of. That person, uh, chances are, are going to be, uh, you know, up locally or up, you know, nationally before people spewing out that same thing. Because the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. It's coming out. What's in you in abundance? What's in you? Listen, what's embedded in you? It's coming out. Amen. Now, it can be suppressed for a while. <laughs> Amen. But when, when, when that person make it to office, it's coming out. Believe me, it's coming out. Now, I'm going to, uh, oh, oh boy, how I'm going to do this. Uh, Priscilla, let's turn to uh, Second Chronicles chapter 14, excuse me, chapter 7, verse number 14. I'm, I'm going to close with this particular verse here. And... Um, Second Chronicles, and we, we all are familiar with this verse, uh, chapter 7, verse number 14. This is from the uh, King James Version of the Bible. Uh, <clears throat> all right, here we go. If my people 
Now, I want you to notice, I'm not splitting hairs here, but these are things that, uh, that has to be uh, brought to your attention. Notice the verse here says, if my people. So he's not talking about if people. <laughs> no, he's not just talking generally. He said, if my people. All right. And of course, what he's referring who he's referring to is Israel, because at that time, Israel was. His people are that he's referring to. Notice this now. If my people, which are called by my name. Shall humble themselves. Now. This is something that. We have to do. I, I mean, I can't. You know, humble you. Uh, I can't hum humble my white brother or, you know, uh, my white sister. This is something you have to do. If my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves, we have to humble ourselves. And in fact, I'm going to show you. Well, uh, the scripture that talks about, you know, it's, it's better for you to humble yourself than God to humble you. All right. <clears throat> Shall humble themselves and pray. And seek my face and turn from their wicked way. Wicked? Wait a minute. I thought he said my people. Turn from their wicked ways. He's talking about Christians. He's talking about my people. Turn from their wicked ways then. OK, now something is going to happen here now. You know, if we're following suit, if we're doing and met the conditions so far, then he says, then, then will I hear from heaven. You know what this verse is saying? Because we seek his face, because we've turned from our wicked ways. Amen. Because we have humbled ourselves. God is saying, I will hear them from heaven. I'll hear them from heaven. Now, watch this. <laughs> and will forgive their sin. And will heal their land. This land needs healing. Oh, my God. I mean, I can't think of a better time than now that our land needs healing. But he's talking to his people. He's talking to you and I. He's telling us, listen, what we can do. That will enable him to heal our land. The word healed here. <laughs> it means to mend. It's the idea of stitches. You know, when a, when a, when a person, you know, uh, after having surgery, when they cut on you and they go in and, they, you know, when they finish up and wrap everything up, they go in and they do the stitching and you have stitches. Well, that's the idea of here. He said, listen. I'll heal their land. This land needs to be healed. This land needs a healing. Amen. Because we are so fragmented. We're so divided. And I'm, I'm not talking about the world, people of God. Again, I got I have to reiterate this. I'm talking about the body of Christ. This issue concerning racism. We are divided. Well, that's your opinion. That's what you think. No. Listen, look around you. That's a fact. Amen. So notice he said, I will. He, I will. I will. If you meet these conditions. Listen, if you humble yourself, if you pray, if you seek my face, if you turn from your wicked ways, then I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. This country needs healing. This country needs something, listen, that only God can give it and only God can do it. All this other stuff, these different ones, these educated people are talking about and these people that, you know, political, you know, analysts or people that are smart concerning this. Listen, fooey on that. If God is not in it, if God cannot be brought in it, it will not work. And I let it go on record that I said that it will not work. 
God is giving us the keys that will bring about healing for this nation. Yes, he's given it to us. Now, what we got to do is, listen, we're going to have to corporately as a body, we're going to have to follow suit with this. And I know, listen, you know, that's a hard road to travel here. I mean, that's some stuff you got to, you know, you got to break up the follow ground. You got to talk about this stuff and people got to be confronted front and center in order, you know, to come to the realization, you know, of really hearing the voice of God or really allowing God to deal with their hearts. So that we can come together and we can do what this verse says. So I'm going to stop here. But on next week, uh, by the grace of God, I'm going to pick back up right here at this verse because there are some other things that we need to talk about. Amen. And uh, and we'll do so. And uh, I'm planning to do just four teachings on this. But again, you know how I operate. Those of you who've been following me and listening to me, I'm not in a hurry. Um, but uh, on next week. Uh, we just may wrap things up. So as of now, my time is up. And I thank you for yours. I never want to end a time of ministry like this without giving people the opportunity that is to make Jesus Christ the Lord of their life. And so if you've been listening to me and uh, the spirit of God has been dealing with your heart. Listen, let's just be real. I mean, you know, and God deals with our hearts. You know, just like the gentleman I've been talking about in Birmingham there, you know, how God dealt with his heart. You know, if God is dealing with your heart and you know you're not right with God, you know you're not in relationship with God. Or you may have at one time been in relationship with him, but you're out of fellowship. You've backslid. Well, I want to pray for you. I really I want to pray for you. I want to help you to mend this relationship. I want to help you to be able to be brought back in fellowship or relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is important. So, if you will, uh, all I ask you to do is just simply repeat after me. And secondly, that you really mean what you're saying. Amen? All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, I ask you now to come into my life. I confess with my mouth Jesus as Lord. I believe in my heart that you raised him from the dead. And right now, by faith, I believe that I'm saved. Thank you, Father, for saving me today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Did you mean that? All right. Well, if you meant that, then welcome to the family of God. You're born again. You are a kingdom citizen. Amen. And the last thing that uh, I'm uh, going to do, and that is give many of you the opportunity to sow, to give into this ministry. Um, it's important, you know, that uh, that we allow the spirit of God to uh, lead us and to put on our hearts what we are to give. Uh, that is, if we are to give uh, newness of life, you know what you need to do where your tithes and offers are concerned. Um, and so um, you can do that. But for others, I want to give you an opportunity to sow and to give into this ministry. Now, newness of life, hands down, is good ground. It's good ground to give into. And, uh, and so, uh, and it's not just good ground because I said it. Amen. It's good ground. Uh, to give into. And so <clears throat> if you will take what you're going to give uh, or take what you are planning to give and let's go before the Lord with that. Amen. Heavenly Father, I pray now for those who have made a decision to sow and to give into newness of life. I thank you, Father, uh, for meeting all of their needs according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. God, I thank you for what they have purposed to happen for newness of life, that you will make it happen in their lives. For that, I thank you and I give you praise in Jesus name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. All right. Well, <clears throat> until next time, my time is up. 
I thank you for yours. And remember, you can walk in a new quality of life.